it might be able to prevent the development of stomach ulcers. If you do something wrong, you take something that would otherwise cause stomach ulcers. And that kind of answers the question, if you can run BPC-157 year-round to prevent um, tendon and connective tissue injuries, Vigorous Steve here. I'm sure you've already heard about BPC-157, which is a 15 amino acid pentatech peptide partial sequence of body protection compound discovered in and isolated from human gastric juice, which is naturally occurring in the intestinal tract. BPC-157 is a bioidentical peptide hormone that literally has hundreds of thousands of positive anecdotal reports, mostly in the context of healing connective tissue injuries, but 99% of the scientific evidence surrounding the beneficial effects of BPC-157 treatments are stemming from animal models, mostly performed on various strains of rats. There's just one abandoned human clinical trial and two studies with actual human subjects, one of which I can't even find the full publication, and the other 180 studies or so are either done on in vitro human cells, the large majority though have been performed on animal models. And while this peptide is ever so promising and offers a broad range of positive effects when it comes to the healing of damaged tissues, it is still considered a gray area peptide and it's yet to be fully clinically investigated, FDA approved and marketed for medical use. Nevertheless, BPC-157 has been extensively used by bodybuilders, strongmen, Olympic weightlifters, CrossFit athletes. I mean, without BPC-157, there would be no CrossFit, right? And even general fitness enthusiasts or general population have used BPC-157 to heal tendon and ligament injuries and even to heal the intestinal tract from various gastrointestinal diseases and conditions. So with such a large sample size of positive results in humans, it being bioidentical and all, why is this peptide not part of the public domain for worry-free usage? Before we continue, I want to highlight the insane amount of scientific investigation and work that Dr. Predrag Sikorek from Croatia has performed on BPC-157. Dr. Sikorek is the one who discovered and isolated BPC-157 from human gastric juices in 1993. Him and his research team have performed dozens of various animal studies to investigate the potential benefits of BPC-157. Without Dr. Sikorek's guidance, we would have never known and understood how effective BPC-157 actually is. And nowadays, since this peptide became publicly available, literally hundreds of thousands of athletes are able to heal their injuries properly. Dr. Pedrug Sikorek is the leading scientist involved in the research and development of BPC-157. And on behalf of the entire enhanced fitness community, Vigor Steve salutes you. Let's have a look at the evidence-based beneficial effects of BPC-157. And these are all scientifically proven citations down below, evidence-based with proper citations. Okay, from the start, BPC-157 has anxiolytic effects, analgesic properties, promotes angiogenesis, modulates blood pressure and improves cardiovascular health and blood flow. Now, the modulation of blood pressure and increasing of blood flow might have potential performance enhancing benefits. But to be fair, when you start comparing BPC-157 to other compounds which are known to induce vasodilation, um, I would say that BPC-157 is pretty low on the performance enhancing drug list. There are much more potent compounds out there which will enhance performance acutely. BPC-157 supports the immune system, heals and prevents stomach ulcers reduces intestinal oxidative stress and reduces intestinal and systemic inflammation. It improves wound healing that's in the eyes, skin, tendons, ligaments, connective tissue, bones, cardiac and skeletal muscle and internal organs. BPC-157 improves collagen, fibrin and elastin synthesis. It improves growth hormone receptor density and response in fibroblasts. More on that later. BPC-157 modulates neurotransmitters in the brain, that being dopamine, GABA, opioid, and serotonin neuromodulation. It has neuroprotective effects in the brain, promotes neurogenesis in the brain, which is very similar to the neurogenic effects of human chorionic gonadotropin. BPC-157 counteracts cardiac hyperkalemia and arrhythmias, protects against cancer-induced cachexia, similarly to selective androgen receptor modulators or some of the new myostatin inhibitors, which are all undergoing various stages of clinical trials. BPC-157 has potential antidepressant properties, 
and mitigates the negative effects of certain medications. They're on the screen. There's a lot of them. And it mitigates the negative effects of certain chemicals. Again, all on the screen. Now, this is very important for you to understand with all of these potential benefits of BPC-157. After reviewing all of the scientific literature, I cannot really find an instance where BPC-157 prevents damage to tissues only heals it after it's already been injured. So in the various animal models, they damage or injure the animal first with some of these chemicals on the screen or in various contexts, and they use BPC-157 to heal the damaged tissue. There's only one context where BPC-157 can actually protect uh, certain organs, which is only in the context of developing stomach ulcers, which makes logical sense because body protection compound found in human gastric juice obviously works in the intestinal tract. So if you take a partial sequence, BPC-157 orally, it might be able to prevent the development of stomach ulcers. If you do something wrong, you take something that would otherwise cause stomach ulcers. And that kind of answers the question, if you can run BPC-157 year round to prevent um, tendon and connective tissue injuries, unfortunately, it hasn't been investigated. All of the animal studies damage the animal first, and then BPC-157 is administered in the context of healing the damaged tissue. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any tangible scientific evidence in the animal models that BPC-157 has a proven protective effect in various injury models where BBC-157 administration can protect or somewhat mitigate the damage which would otherwise occur without BPC-157 treatment being in place. Unfortunately, those studies have not been performed, so um, we're going into a little bit of a dubious speculation. Could it potentially have a beneficial effect to prevent injuries from happening? Maybe, maybe, but I don't know anybody personally who runs BBC-157 year round. And to kind of prove this point, in the latest BBC 157 publication written by Dr. Pridrak Sikarik, posted on April 30th, 2023, titled Stable Gastric Pentadecapeptide BPC 157 May Recover Brain Gut Axis and Gut Brain Axis Function. In here, they basically go over all previous studies performed on BPC-157, and they specifically highlight the beneficial healing effects on various organs in various conditions. If you do a word count for prevent or avoid, you'll find a lot less instances compared to doing a word count on counteract, recovery, or resolve, right? The citations are down below. Give that article, that publication, a read if you want to get the lowdown on the latest on BBC 157. So again, the only context where BBC 157 prevents injuries is in cases of stomach ulcers. So if you're high on baby aspirin or you're high on oral steroids or you're high on oral liquid serums containing a boatload of synthetic solvents and you didn't take your glutamine to protect your stomach lining, then you now have a legitimate reason to run oral BPC 157 year round. Or you can take the baby aspirin or orals out and just run fish oil or vitamin E for their similarly blood thinning properties. 